fun. This was the time for pain and for misery. After a year of radiation poisoning from the aftermath of World War III, the process of natural life started to change. For instance, this fellow right here. When a woman becomes a mother in this time, it seems to be far more dangerous than in your time now. When a woman is pregnant, an organ known as a placenta grows in her uterus to give her baby nutrients. And this time, though, the placenta is infected with radiation and grows haywire and sinister. It decides to absorb the baby and eat it in full. After this 12-hour process, the placenta uses the baby's energy to grow a hard and spiky turtle-like shell. It will use the shell to rip and tear through the mother's stomach to roam free among the cold ruins of Earth. When it has made its way fully out, it will then look for more flesh to consume, using the once umbilical cord now as its own mouth, sucking like a vacuum cleaner with tremendous, horrendous pressure. It will go down in infamy under the name Placenta Puss. <laughs> and with that, it's time for the five rounds of the House of Ross MMA Episode 4 main event. <laughs> this is the UFC 245, 248 pre-fight show. <laughs> Sponsored by Soggy. Oh, wait, hang on. Never mind. Cut that. No, we can't do that. It's too yeah. late. Um, it's, it's too late for that. that was a, well, that's the best intro we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought that would get you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, how much, so. How much of that did you get recorded of me about reading? Ni- about 90%. I missed the first, <laughs> like, three sentences. <laughs> yeah, there's no context. There never will be. Um, Great. All right. So I wrote in the order of what we're going to do tonight to make sure because there's a fuck ton that we have to cover. But we're going to try. We're going to try to cover the other the parts that aren't as important very briefly. And as yeah. a as a um, short explanation, we have not covered the last three UFC fight nights because they have been <laughs> pure shite, and uh, they were not worthy <laughs> of videos. Yeah. Um, even is, even I mean, they're my free. fight of the year. Uh, Diego Sanchez and Michelle yeah. Pereira. Even yeah. that really fell through. Really, there was only one fight. Well, there were some like really, really um, under the radar good fights. On there were some fights here and there on the cards that were decent, but there was really only one of the three that was like really worth your time. You should go watch. Um, yeah. And we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, and we're gonna a, get a, a, a uh, mountain of robberies. Yes. Just um, littered. So, just real quick to uh, give us to give a preview of what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover the last fight night cards very briefly, um, and then we're gonna do a UFC 248 preview. Then we're gonna you know do our, our normal segments. Fuck it, the prelims, and the lightning round, or the timer, yeah. flashcards, whatever. I'm gonna call it lightning round now. I feel like that that sounds better, you know. Um, all right. And then, uh, are you a casual? Um. All right. Sounds good to me. Yeah, so first off, UFC Fight Night 167, Jan Blakovic versus uh, Corey Anderson. Um, we'll just start from the top and work. And I, I only have three fights in this card that I even want that I even want to mention. Um, Jan Blakovic. Oh, do remember? Yeah, gets the knockout. And if you don't, I'll, I'll, I have it all written down. So, uh, yeah, Jan Blakovic gets the knockout. He was the underdog in this fight, which I found to be kind of um, silly. Um, they did fight before. And Anderson did wrestle fuck him for three rounds. But I that was a long time ago, and I had felt like Jan, and it's a lot easier to say because I didn't even cover the preview of this. It's easier to say in retrospect. But uh, I thought Jan was there should have been the favorite going in because I thought I thought he had improved the most. And Corey Anderson's hype was only based on the Johnny Walker finish. Other than that, I don't think he's looked all that impressive, to be honest. Like not that he's a little mm. impressive, he's an elite level fighter. But I didn't feel like he's looked like he's evolved that much. Knocking out Johnny Walker, yeah. Now, dude only had two fights in the UFC, or three fights. Can't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, so Jan knocks him out in the first round because um, he's a great, great MMA boxer. Excellent. And now they're they're really hyping him and John Jones up, and I I would rather see Reyes or Santos fight him again. 
But whatever. Yes. I don't care. I, re- I would like to see Reyes fight him again and then Jan fight Santos in a rematch because they fought before also. And uh, it was very oh, yeah. competitive. And then Santos knocked him out in the third round. And I feel like uh, yeah. Jan's gotten better since then and Santos looked fucking amazing against Jones. So I feel like that'd be a fun route to go. But who knows? They're talking about John versus Stipe. They're talking about John versus Adesanya. You really just never know anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and on this card, two illegal knee disqualifications. Yes. <clears throat> who was the uh, minor one? The small arm. Who, who were they? Do Brock, you know? Brock, Brock Weaver and Rodrigo v- uh, Vargas. Based on what I remember, that knee was worse than the uh, Diego Sanchez Pereira one, right? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, like that, was, that out, was like right, right on his face. It or was rough. Drops him or something. Yeah, it was a really bad knee. It was really bad. Yeah, but I thought both the knees were pretty bad. The San- the uh, Diego one, I think the cut was pretty bad. That it, it did it did cut him, but I didn't think it looked like it hurt him a ton. Like, the other one, you, the dude was definitely fucked. Diego in this one was very coherent, and he was pretty much okay. But, uh... Um... Yeah. We could go on forever about the fucking Diego one. Um, cause well, I, agreed, stuff- I agree with Diego Sanchez's call to not continue. I agreed with it. This okay, this, this is my take on it. It's smart because you get more money when you win, regardless of the dic- disqualification or not. So from a I'm going I'm a fighter and I'm gonna get paid, it's a better route to go. Um, yeah. But from the like I'm the warrior mentality, um, and uh, questioning his will to win, I mean he pretty much he did quit. I feel like there's no really denying that he quit. I mean he literally looked at the ref and said, uh, if I if I say I can't continue, will I get a disqualification or not? And the ref wouldn't answer. He just because you're, you're not supposed to. Um, yeah, he pretty much qu- he obviously quit, but he's been such a warrior in the past that you have to give him a little bit of a you know he's been such a banger throughout his whole career that you kind of have to give him a pass on yeah. just one. But then you yeah, got I mean, the, he's almost forty for God's sakes. He got need in his head. Yeah, and then you got but the, the real the real kicker is the questions with his coach John Fabia or um, Joshua Fabia. I mean, if you haven't yeah. listened to any of his interviews with like Luke Thomas or. Uh, or just go look at his page. I forget what the fuck it's called. Um, uh, I shouldn't. I don't even know. I want to sponsor a guy. Just look up Joshua Fabia. His I'm sure his website will come up. Uh, the dude is pretty much like one of those. Um, you know, I mean, he hasn't done this literally, but he's one of those like fake martial arts knock you out with one punch, or without without punching you, or like you know, fake just fake martial arts. I mean, he's like one of the and like one of the spiritual healers. I mean, literally, he on his website it literally says the word magic. And not in a joking way. So yeah, he's he's a sham. He's also Diego's manager, his coach, striking coach, and grappling coach. He's he's, he's his entire coach, coaching staff, cornerman. So yeah. God, I say I say give Diego Sanchez Conor McGregor and actually set that up. That's what I want. It'd be fun for his money, but it wouldn't be good for Diego's uh, brain. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, and the last fight I want to mention on this card was Lando Venata versus Jansen Medeiros. That fight was really fun. Oh, Still on this card. Yeah, just last um, one. That is the best fight on the card to watch. If you're just like trying to watch the most entertaining fight on the card, I think that's pretty much hands down the best. It's pretty much striking battle. Landon Venata, 30, 30 27 Zim. Uh, just seemed to uh, mm. that his movement and awkwardness threw Yancey Medeiros off quite a bit. Um, and I want to say Yancey Medeiros yeah. is a pretty big losing streak and will either get a very, very low quality fight or get cut after this, I have to imagine. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I have not asked. I don't even remember that fight. <laughs> it's the best one on the card. Uh, moving on to UFC Fight Night 168. Oh, man. This was the one This was the one that had the best fight out of all the three. Uh, Dan Hooker defeats Paul Felder via unanimous decision. No, split decision. Split so, yeah. decision. Uh, Lots of controversy around this fight. Uh, incredible fight. Banger in, fight. Uh, yeah, amazing. in my opinion, it holds fight of the year so far. In my opinion, this is the fight of 2020. And I think it's going to be very difficult to top it. We'll have to see. 
I can't remember enough to argue with you, but I wouldn't argue. I'll pro- it's it's definitely up there. It's I mean I, I I wouldn't say you're wrong. I just can't remember. You might be right. It might, it was amazing. It was a great fight. Um, yeah. Mostly stand up. Um, controversial decision, but okay. So I hate when people. I, I hate when people defend robberies. So like. A big thing in MMA media is there'll be a fight that's very, very clear cut. Someone should have won. Like, uh, say, Reyes versus Jones. Reyes definitely should have won. Um, and Or like a, or, or a, pro, a pass example that's really bad is um, Hamill versus Bisbing. Or like, uh, I don't know. Just take pick, take your pick of the uh, very clear game decision wins. Um, I hate when MMA media says, it wasn't a robbery, it was very close. Now, sometimes that is a, that is appropriate. Yeah. Um, that a lot sometimes very 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 close fights uh, are not robberies; they're just very close. It can go either way. But a lot of times, MMA media will just say it's not a robbery because it was competitive and you could score it for the other person. Um, this actually was one of those examples where it it really could yeah. have probably gone either way. Uh, it was very yeah. very very competitive. Um, I hope I don't get the rounds wrong, but I want to say round one and round four were the most clear rounds. If like Hooker very clearly won round one, and then Paul Felder very clearly won round four. Those are the those were the uh, most clear cut rounds of the fight. The rest of them were very very con- uh, competitive. Um, I mean, they were all competitive, but those are the most like controversial ones. Um, I, I, that being said, I want to say I scored it 30, um, 48, 47 hooker. I think I gave mm-hmm. hooker round one, two and five. It was it two or three, one, two and five Felder Felder, uh, three and four, I think, but I wouldn't argue with you if you thought Felder won. Yeah. I thought it was a draw. I, going into the fifth round, I remember I had a two to two. Um, I think I had Hooker one and three and Felder two and four, but yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah. But, uh, and then the fifth round of me was just a, yeah, it was just a draw. It was a 10, 10 round. I don't, I don't think there was any clear evidence of a loser in that fight at all. So I just, yeah. I would have given it a draw. Yeah. And th- this was a great fight. Um, a, a perfect example of why there should be more 10-10 rounds and why there should – or any at all – and why there should be more draws. Um, so if you don't know, yeah. the 10-point must system allows for 10-10 rounds, but the judges are steered heavily against it. They're, they're, they're told to not do it pretty much. So they, they literally crazy. never give 10-10 rounds, even though it's within the rules. Um, and this was one of the fights where you – this, this – if – if they did give more 10 10 rounds, this fight is like the most clear cut draw you've ever seen. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, not much else to say about that one. Um, the only other fights to mention on this one would be uh, Jimmy Crute. What her name? Jimmy Crute. Versus uh, McCall something. Yeah, it did a full, full rapage. Yeah, McCall. Just look up Jimmy Crute's last one. I can't fucking pronounce his name. It's like McCall something. Yeah, he just uh, wrestle fucks the dude, and uh, was he tap him or ground upon him? I can't even remember at this point. He taps him. Rear naked choke first. It was or pretty. Um, pretty sure it's rear naked choke. I can't remember though, it but uh, it was it was pretty bad though. He he beat the dude pretty bad. Yeah. So he yeah. looked good. It looked like the looked other good. guy, McCall, could have. Uh, he he had very low. Um, his physique just wasn't that great. Let's put it that way. He looks like he could have dropped about two weight classes if he was very committed to uh, being in his ideal weight because he has virtually no visible muscle. He kind of flabby a little bit. Um, yeah. Fruit just uh, physical, just way more physical. And the last one, very sad on this oh card. Oh boy. Very very what sad. What a card. Uh, Carolina. God damn it! Just gets just gets demolished by Yan X, who was on Yan X. How do you pronounce her name? Was on what like a ten fight win streak or something? Um, they're just feeding her to up and comers just to the, so they can get a recognizable name on her rec- their records. Um, and if you have not seen her Instagram or anything after, um, 
so in the first round, she broke a small bone in her left eye, uh, right under the uh, eyeball. I forgot about that fight. And it oh, made God, it so that was rough. her eye doesn't move in the socket properly. <laughs> if you see in her Instagram, she's pretty much wall-eyed now. This, her, this eye like, look, is looking straight up, and this will be looking straight forward. Um, uh, and she has, it's awful. Um, yeah, but that's really third sad. Day. Let's hope she uh, gets it together. I really hope because I yeah, like her a lot. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. She gets mauled over three rounds, just beaten to Poor punch. Poor bastard. Round. Yeah, it's really sad. I, I like Carolina a lot, so feel very bad. Hang it up. <laughs> the first hanging up of the week. Hang it Carolina up for me. Copenhagen. First hanging up. Carolina. Yeah, she's she. What is she? What, I mean, what is she else? What is she gonna do at this point? I gotta get a little animation Nothing. that comes up says hang it up, and we we also need to get shirts. Yeah. Hang, hang it up. Um, yeah, that'd be great. All right, moving on. You've let's so just, much let's, else, let's right? just go to the next card. <laughs> let's just go to the next card. Yeah, UFC Fight yeah. Night uh, 169. Benavidez versus Figueredo. Figueredo, how the fuck you pronounce it? Um, yeah, this. <laughs> if you never had a reason to get rid of flyweight until this point, this is the silver platter. Can Hicks, the hang it up. Hang it up. UFC <laughs> flyweight division. I feel bad because there's a lot of guys that get paychecks through them. But honest to God, you can probably make more money fighting in like 1FC. Um, so God. in the if you haven't heard the uh, disaster of this – of uh, flyweight. So already nobody cares too much about flyweight, even though Demetrius Johnson and Henry Cejudo were like two of the b- best fighters like in history. Um, people just don't really care about 125 pound men fighting. Um, and there's not a lot of trash talkers. There's like more people too. Yeah, there's um, barely any 125 men. Yeah. So Benavidez being a, um, I don't want to say legend, but he's a. Um, very seasoned, very well uh, respected, very well liked uh, MMA pioneer, a pioneer of yeah, the. Yeah, he's a veteran. Races. Veteran, yes. Uh, is signed to fight Devison Figueredo. I'm, I'm butchering this name, Figueredo. I can't remember. Uh, and Figueredo misses weight by two and a half pounds, which makes him ineligible to fight for the title. Which means that if he wins, he's not going to be the champion. But Everyone's saying, finger crossed, Benavidez wins. He deserves it. He's a nice guy. Married to Megan O'Levy. Um, only lost to Demetrius Johnson and Dominic Cruz. I mean, the dudes... I, oh, wait, a split decision loss to Sergio Pettis, which is really weird right, in retrospect. But um, well, You're not going to like how this story ends, if you think all of that. Um, yeah, but he's he got tons of wins. He's beaten some, he's beaten some very talented people. Um, comes out in this fight looking like shit. I mean, I think he still won the first <laughs> round, but it was kind of one of those rounds where Figueredo was like, let me just sit back and uh, I'll, I'll find my time. Um, almost arm bars from the beginning. But uh, Benavidez gets out because he's a great grappler, a great scrambler, and uh, outstrikes him on the feet for the majority of the round, uh, numerically and visually. Yeah. And, oh, but I should mention the whole round, I was sitting there like, okay, well, you, you're winning, but uh, it's not looking great because uh, no. he does this thing where. When he's circling, he crosses his feet, which is very strange. You don't see a lot of hollow strikers do that. Um, and it really puts you to where if they catch you on that on the right time and your feet are crossed, you can't evade properly. So that's already bad. Um, and he also loves to do this uh, shift and dart in, where, but he was just kind of throwing haymakers with it. And uh, he leans with his head forward. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, he just ducks right in. Yeah, he darts right in, head forward, swinging bombs. And it was kind of working, but it was just kind of like Figueroa was just going to bide his time. And, yeah, it, just uh, t- it just takes one time for that to fuck yeah. up, and of course it's going to fuck up. Yeah, and then Figueroa figured him out in the second round. <sighs> Waits to the right moment. I haven't even watched the highlight. You still there? The video just went out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Wait, by this time, it might have been when he crossed his feet, too. Just like I said, Figueroa unleashes a uh, bomb and just drops him, knocks him out. and uh, <laughs> It was a bad punch, too. It was very sad. It's very sad. Benavidez gets, gets the loss. And there is still no flyaway champion. <laughs> so, um, you know. Man, I hope they don't. Go ahead I and uh, can that division. 
I hope they don't rematch, man. That'd be rough. Yeah, they're saying that's what probably going to happen, but uh, I don't and know. And then talking about women getting fucked up, uh, Felicia Spencer, God, just threw some elbows down. <clears throat> yeah, that was that was brutal to watch. Yeah, fucked her up pretty bad. What it was stoppage TKO stoppage, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, the girl's now six and four. She's lost two in a row in UFC. I don't yeah. know why she was a co-main event. Yeah, that was bizarre. This is why we haven't covered all these fights separately because the cards are proper shite. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so yeah, that was just sad. And then the light heavyweight fight, <laughs> the worst stoppage in history. Our next hanging it up goes to the ref. Oh wait, hey, we should say it was Spence was. versus Dos Santos. Let's see if so. Just skip the fight. Um, and also, Spencer is most likely going to fight Amanda Nunez next, I imagine, because she's the only person at that weight class. By the way, this is a women's 145, which after three years still does not have a ranking system. There's still no rankings for it because there's <laughs> no body in the division. That's another hang it up of the league. Hang it up, UFC uh, featherweight, women's featherweight. <laughs> Web, Web, well, hey, there's, there's no two featherweight fights. On this, this card, though. Yeah, this card This card featured all the featherweights they have outside of Manu. <laughs> that was all of them. You watched, you watched her competition <laughs> this well, weekend. Megan, yeah, but they were both a solid fight. Both one-round TKO stoppages. I mean, they were and they were fun, good fights, but do you really see any of them doing anything with Manu Nunez? Uh, no. God, Felicia no. Spencer. Felicia Spencer might do okay. Felicia Spencer is good enough to beat... A lot of people because she's so tough. I mean, remember the side the beating cyborg gave her. She's just tough as nails. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you never know with MMA. Crazy things have happened, but uh, I don't see it happening. But uh, yeah. And then the uh, most interesting fight on the card. The most interesting fight on the card. Ion Kuti Laba versus um, I forget the guy's first name. Ankalaev, which is a hell of a last name. You just look at the dude's name and you know he's from Russia and he's uh, probably friends. Magomed. Magomed Akalaev. That's right, Akalaev. Um, so, if you don't know Ion Kutilaba, he is a goddamn psycho. <laughs> and uh, he, is, he is known to uh, known for showing up to the weigh-ins painted fully green as the Incredible Hulk and screaming. Uh, getting into <laughs> um, Cleo Rontree's face and screaming at the weigh-ins for no reason. Cleo uh, Rontree's a nice dude. Um, and he's also not known for being very bright. Um, not, not the smartest dude in the world. Um, but yeah, he's yeah. Uh, very violent and very angry most of the time, and it makes for uh, good fun most of the time. He's also a very good grappler, uh, but he has shit cardio. Um, I think his last... He's, he's, got a, he's strung, strung together some wins. His last loss was to Glover Teixeira. He was winning the first round, and he got tired, and Glover just paced him up, I think finished him... Submission, or I can't remember. Um, Ankalaev on a what, like 10 fight winning streak or something? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good Russian. Um, and began the fight at the stare downs. Um, Ion Kutilaba walks across. They're, they announce his name. And this is just kind of a foreshadowing for what's going to happen during the night because the ref does not do his job in um, stopping <laughs> Kutilaba from literally walking. The entire distance across the cage to get right in Ankalaev's face, literally face to face, and uh, Ankalaev grabs him with two underhooks and throws him against the fence. Then the ref and security and all of them have to get and separate him. Um, and we're lucky that nothing else happened, to be honest. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, and I'll, I'll give you. I'll, here's what we'll do. I'll, I'll give I'll give them how I viewed the fight first, and then I'll let them you explain how you saw the fight happen. If that's oh, our okay. best way to do it. Um, so this is how I saw it happen. Um, I've rewatched it multiple times since since then because it's been a huge debate on the internet, sure dog that type of thing. Um, so Ankalaev, they start swinging and banging, and Ankalaev hits him with a two strike combo. And the first one lands right behind the ear. I can't remember the side. And the second one is like right on the chin. The second one wasn't that bad. The first one was bad and hit him right behind the ear. Um, and then uh, Kuti Laba gets wobbled. Um, and 
after that, this is where it's a little bit foggy. He, I think he's definitely wobbled at first. This is where it gets a little wonky. He's definitely wobbled at first, and Uncle Liab starts throwing a bunch of strikes that don't really land very well. Um, some of them, some of them get through. Most of them don't. And uh, the the most, I, you can't really tell. I I want to say that at first he was really wobbled, but then he he plays it up a little bit, a little bit near the end, near the end of the stoppage. I think he's playing it up, but I do think he was definitely hurt at first. And then as the fight went on, he kind of hammed up the um, the uh, the trouble that he was in, and it backfired horrifically because. Kevin mm -hmm. McDonald. Oh, he also throws some looping haymakers towards the end that completely whiff. Um, and uh, he's also looking away from uh, Uncle Liev. And he looks back at him and tries to swing. She completely missed. And then uh, Kevin McDonald, rough Kevin McDonald steps in and Kutilava goes off. And uh, the worst ref in the history of the sport. Yeah, he didn't do great. And uh, it's terrible. Stop. <laughs> they should definitely run it back, especially with how much these two don't like each other. Um, yeah. But I definitely think they should do that. Yeah, but that's that's how I see it. Now, how did you see it? Well, I saw it as uh, he lands a couple. Stri he lands a strike or two. They don't. They don't really seem that heavy. Don't really seem that important. Uh, but uh, Ion freaks out and thinks that he's hurt uh, Magomed, so he starts like. Jumping on him and trying to. I think he hurt Kutilava. Uh, you mean? Right. 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 Sorry. Magomed thinks he hurt Ion, and uh, so then he starts jumping on him. And I think Ion realized that he thought like he was like like everyone's screaming. He's like, oh shoot! Like this dude thinks uh, that he's about to win this. So then he starts playing it up to make him like come in. He's like wobbling him. He's literally doing like a video game. Like you get stunned in a video game and you're like, oh. He starts like literally doing it like that, like a video game character. And then right when uh, Magomed comes in, he'll just throw a haymaker. And then he starts wobbling again. Oh. And then he comes back and he throws another haymaker at him. And he's just doing it. It's like he's literally just like playing up this theatric game to get him to come in so he could knock him out. But the ref was like, oh no, we got to stop this. <laughs> he's, he's out. He's out. <laughs> just like what a as he's at mid haymaker, he's throwing the refs like no, it's done. <laughs> Idiot. So you, you don't and think then, he was? You don't think he was ever hurt, ever? I no, I think he I think he got hit and Magomed freaked out and the guy was like, I'm gonna use this to my advantage, but I don't think he was ever like, dude. Right when the ref stops the fight, I am losing. Immediately stops wobbling completely and looks at him like, yeah. "What the fuck are you doing?" So you you don't think the initial strikes even hurt him though, like the very first one that hit him behind the ear? I mean, I'm sure it didn't feel great, but I don't think it, mean, like, it wobbled I, him. Wobbled him. Like, do you think that all the wobbling was? Fake? I don't think he was ever a single ounce in danger. I don't think he was ever in danger. Um, it's really up for debate. I personally don't think that uh, – see, I think you know, getting behind the ears where your equilibrium fluid is, and that's where you typically get wobbled. I don't necessarily think that Ayan Kutilaba is smart enough to uh, get hit cleanly and then think immediately, I'm going to fake being hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's too dumb to uh, even think of a strategy like that until Magua started freaking out and the crowd started cheering. Then he was like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. But it's up for debate. Uh the, what this this fight is a prime example of the phrase "play stupid games, win stupid prizes." Oh, because yeah. uh, you pretended like you were hurt, and you pretended like every strike that was thrown at you was hurting you even worse. And I'm not saying the ref should have stopped it because it was clearly a very bad stoppage. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, the uh, worst. I mean, Kutilaba is partially at fault for the stoppage if he did ham it up, you know. And I even looked up the rules, and this is actually it's actually against the rules to fake like you're hurt. Um, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it's it's the definition of the rules is uh, you you are not allowed to fake an injury, and if you consider uh, pretending like you're rocked an injury, which I would, I would say it's yeah. part. Of, you're not allowed to do that. Um, well, so I think it's I think it's interesting how the whole main card there wasn't a single fight that made it to the third round. Really, every single fight was stopped in the first and second. Damn. I, it did end really quick. It ended at like ten. It started at like eight. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Because remember, remember they they, yeah. they pumped they bumped up the Benavides 
Figueredo promo really hard. It was like going. They, they yeah, set it out for like fifteen, 15 minutes. minute promo. Yeah. <laughs> it was also, great, really, really quick before we jump into two forty eight, I wrote down this. I forgot to mention it. Uh, the combat wombat is is vote is awarded for, from the House of Rouse the worst fighter in UFC. Wait, who was that again? Combat Wombat was that dude who fought and he just got immediately oh, knocked out. Yes, 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 yes. Um, <laughs> uh, what, was his, what was his name? Uh, yeah, the black hair. Ben Sasoli. Yeah, the Combat yeah. Wombat. Got stretched yeah, he's, in like 30 seconds or something, right? Or yeah, minute he's 30. The, yeah, he's the worst fighter in UFC. Hang you it up. Worth that by the, by the house for house. Yeah, <laughs> hang it up. Those were all of our hang it ups of the week. We had a lot to make up for. He's the guy that got the no contest over Greg Hardy for the inhale. He actually has two back to back no contests in the UFC. That's shocking. Yeah. <laughs> and then a loss. Yeah. So, um, the yeah. Worst. He's, he's not great. <laughs> Poor bastard. Um, I'll put that award up. All right. Now that that's, that's gone. We finally uh, caught up. Yeah, we're, caught, we're all caught up here at the House of Rouse. Oh, and I would also like to mention that this last card, the Benavides card, I was five for five on the fight picks. And if you follow our Instagram, you would see that because I did post it on our Instagram. And uh, But it didn't count because we didn't give a shit about this card. And, of course, we didn't four, talk about it. So that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, oh, baby. I'm about to come back with the, with these predictions right here I, I, I know it um uh you i feel like our picks are pretty solid most of the time i think we, we get it i mean I, i've won every time but uh, i feel like <laughs> generally i mean it's not that hard i guess because you have the favorite and the odd makers but, but well i uh, never even look at that to be honest i don't either but i assume based on my like you know our knowledge i'm who's gonna be the favorite and uh, yeah. but I try to pick it not based on that. And we've definitely got it wrong at times also. But uh, here we go. Here's another predictions. UFC 248. Um, we start. We all start at the top, right? We start at the bottom. We, no, we start from the bottom of the main card and go to the okay. top. Um, bottom of the main card. Alex Cowboy Oliveira versus Max Griffin. <laughs> just a just a bunch of old fucks. Um, the thing is a lot of these fights um like this one doesn't have a lot of uh what's the word um uh doesn't mean it there's no weight to it yes yes it doesn't it doesn't doesn't have a lot of uh weight for the division the future division no um but it should be a fun fight as alex Oliver typically in fun fights yeah Um, yeah, I don't really know what a lot to say about it. Um, it's a it's a toss up. It's a flip yeah. of the coin. Yeah, it's really a flip of the coin fight. Uh, Oliveira on a three fight losing streak, but at least one of them with Mike Perry was very competitive. Um, Max Griffin, honest to God, don't even remember his last fight that well. It's very, uh, yeah, he's very inconsistent. Win he loss, lost, win loss. He lost to Tiago Alves though, so I'm going to go ahead and say Alex Oliveira is going to win. <laughs> Well, the thing is, yeah, go Alves. I feel like this is a this is prime. I feel like this is a make it or break it fight. So whoever loses this, they're out. I think. Um, they, yeah, they look like a bunch of old fucks. Max Griffin, his last six fights went to decision, mm-hmm. which is which is awful. And for that reason, Alex Oliveira, yeah, I got him to win too. Um, he's more aggressive, and uh, I think he's. Gonna take it to Griffin and get a second round TKO. Okay. Um, shit, man, I don't even know uh, how I think he's gonna win. Um, this dude, this name has to be wrong. I'm looking at this uh, one name. Um, I, I don't even know. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a decision win, or I'm gonna say either decision or sub- submission win by Alex Oliveira. Um, and then moving on to the next fight, I was trying to look this guy up right now. To make sure this is this Li right. Jingliang. Okay, that's definitely spelt wrong in here because this says Li Jingling. 
Why are you it's Lee Jing Liang. J I N G L I A N G. Jing Liang. Oh, there we go. The Jing Liang. Yeah, they said Neil. The late great Neil Magny. Yeah. Um, I was trying to see to make sure I had his record right. Um, Dude, he's actually got a good record in the UFC. I I don't even remember seeing the fight. Neil Magny beat Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, split decision. Kelvin looked like shit in that fight. Um, craziness. Neil Magny's kind of hit or miss, to be honest. Um, very big for the weight class. But uh, I do not think he's going to win. And I've got Li Jingling. Get the Li, W. <laughs> Li Jingliang. Yeah. Well, this is, my, this is what I think. I think if it goes to decision, Magny's definitely going to win. Because uh, he has a history of always getting the judge's favor no yeah. matter what. Yeah. So I, I think if it goes to decision, Magny's winning. But I think that Lee's going to knock his ass out the first round. Because <laughs> his last two fights have been knockout wins. And I think Lee's going to... And, and Magny's starting to get old. He's like 30, uh, 32 30, now. Yeah, he's not that old, but he's, got, he's, he's, he's old in fight years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is the one I thought we were going to disagree on. No. But uh, apparently not because I got yeah Li Jingliang knocking his ass out in the first, first round. The thing with Madden is he has some good wins, like uh, Hector Lombard and Kelvin Gastelum and Carlos Condit and Johnny Hendricks, although a lot of them are past their prime. Like Har- Condit was way past his prime. Hendricks. I was going to say, Condit is not that impressive. I mean, it was when he was back and he was actually Condit, but he's not Condit anymore. And uh, Johnny Hendricks, after the, Law- the fucking Lawler fight, just uh, – Dipped off harder than anybody we've ever seen dip off. Looked awful. <laughs> um, Lombard wasn't that great after the uh, roids. And uh, Kelvin Gaston was a weird one. Um, I honestly can't remember how well he wins that fight. But, uh, yeah, strange. Um, but he also has some horrific losses. Like uh, getting brutally knocked out by Larkin. Um RDA just fucking destroyed. I think he leg kicked him. Magni fell, and then he just jumped on him. It was, it was just a wrap. He just, like, arm trial yeah. immediately. And then uh, Ponzinibbio just beat the hell out of him also uh, and took his time doing it. Took him four rounds, beat the hell out of him for three and a half rounds. Fourth round finished him. So, uh, yeah, I think Jing, Jingling is going to uh, get the win. <laughs> yep, I do too. I well, I don't even remember seeing him fight, but um, that's, my, that's on me. All right. I uh, I don't think we're gonna have a single different opinion this card. We might. It might. It might come down to who uh, who says how they're gonna win. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I haven't said. Yeah, I'm gonna say Jing Ling is gonna knock him out also. But um, this next one is tough. This is one of the harder one to, harder ones to pick. Um, mm-hmm. lightweight bout. Yeah, Dariush is uh, has been very good in f- in flash moments, and uh, is on a three fight win streak, and has looked his, he's he's looked a lot better in his last three wins. I would say his grappling um, has come together very well, although it's not been against the best competition. Um, Except <laughs> for the dude who uh, he beat freaking Fiera, uh, Fiera, the dude who just beat Pettis. Beat that dude. He already did, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. That was a while ago. But, beat, um, Jim, beat Jim Miller. Beat Michael Johnson. I mean, this dude yeah. has some serious win. wins. Um, But lost, knocked out by Alexander Hernandez, and draw with Evan Dunham, which is weird. Uh, he was beating Barboza handily. But what he did was, that was actually an amazing highlight. Uh, he would throw a jab, and like GSP would do, but just not nearly to the same degree. He would jab and immediate level change and take him down after the jab because he would get you to react to the jab. And when you reacted to it, that's when he'd shoot. And in the second, between rounds, because he got him down like three times in the first round. Between, between rounds, Edson Barboza's corner was like, hey, after he jabs, f- throw a flying knee. And uh, second round, oh, dang. Bar- Darius immediately jab, 
goes to double leg, and Barboza just fucking rips that flying knee and knocks him unconscious. That's horrible. Um, great pickup by the corner between rounds. It's like that's like one of the most like um, impressive. It's just, it's just like really cool to see them read b- between the corner. Like the coach is like, "Hey, we saw this. This is how you stop it between rounds." So I thought that was pretty, yeah. pretty cool to see. Um, but Draco Close has uh, impressed me a lot throughout the years. Um, beating uh, Venata, beating uh, Bobby Green, uh, beating Mark to Casey. Um, and I actually think Dracar Close is going to win a decision. Oh, shit. Well, he's on a three fight win streak. And yeah, he's, of course, decision. Yeah, because, I mean, he's not a finisher, really. Yeah. Very technical striker from what I've seen. But I actually have Darius submitting. In the third round, I, yeah, I don't see the other guy winning. This I'm, dude is, is yeah. almost, I mean, this dude's been in the UFC for six years now. Yeah, I'm, I'm only about 55-45 on this one. I could see Darius also submitting him or having a gut, gutty war. This might end up being fight of the night. I don't even know. Because um, they both, their fights are always good, both their fights for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think Close is a little better on the feet, and I think he might be able to keep the fend off the wrestling enough to um, beat him on the feet. Decision. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I guess this is where we're split. It's always one fight every time. Well, or is it? Oh no, yeah, you probably. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I got Darius third round uh, submission. I just think the other guy's not a finisher. Uh, I feel like, and then uh, Darius is a pretty good finisher, and I feel like he'll be the one who takes it to him, gets him on the ground. Uh, and he has pretty successful takedown rate too. Yeah. So, um, and then we'll go to our coming event because we're running short on time here. It's probably a long, our longest episode because we have a lot to cover. Um, yeah. Zhang Wai Li taking on Joanna Yojacek. Try to spell that fucking last name on your own. Um, I don't have honestly, a lot to say about it. This fight is a very... I mean, you're probably going to disagree with me. But um, a very, very, very difficult pick. Um, the thing about Zhang Wai Li is that... Yeah, she looked great being Andrade, and uh, she's obviously very powerful and very athletic, and she's shown some interesting um, things in the octagon, but she's relatively untested in the octagon. Um, I want to say she's only had four or five fights. Let me look it up real quick to make sure I'm getting this right. Um, Awesome nickname, by the way, Magnum. Um, no, she's had, she had one, two, three, four. Yeah, five, four, four fights. Um, did not look Never great. looked bad, though. Oh, Never looked her. bad. <laughs> did not look great until her last fight. Never looked bad. Always looked good. Never looked amazing to me. Yeah. Um, I think she's relatively untested. Um, you know, you just never know if she's going to be one of those flash in the pan, like, has an amazing win, wins the belt, and then just gets outpointed. Uh, Joanna is far more experienced than her. Um, you know, was the reigning champion for a while. Um, not far more experienced in terms of actual MMA fights, but in terms of high-level MMA fights. And Joanna has fought everybody. Um, she's fought Watterson, Shevchenko, yeah. Torres, Nunez, um, Nama Yunus, Andrade, Carolina, Claudia. I mean, she's fought everybody. Yeah, she's a vet. Um, and not to mention the like hundreds of Muay Thai fights she's had. Um, but that all being said, I think Zhang Weili is going to get it done. Um, I think she might be able to hurt Joanna in the clinch um, with you know, the elbows and knees and whatever. And I also think she has very good leg kicks. And I think she'll be able to hold her own in the range because that's really Yuana's best thing is to keep it in keep it at distance and uh, you know get the low kicks get the jabs she has great takedown yeah. defense but 
Zhang Wale does some very similar things that Valentina Shevchenko does, like the spinning kicks and the bladed stances and all that kind of thing. So I think she's going to win a decision. But, like, I mean, like, 51, you know, 49. <laughs> like, very, very, very close. Mm-hmm. Hard pick. That's the, exa- that's the exact same thing I have as, as Zhang decision. Yeah. And uh might be a close fight, but uh, she, I think Ioana's getting older. She is very experienced, but uh seems like in the last few fights, she just really – she just takes beatings. Her face is always just getting fucked up. Yeah. And – uh, I just don't know how much more how much more beatings she can take, especially this girl's so powerful. I mean, regardless of whoever wins, Joanna is, by the end of it, 100% guaranteed her face is going to look fucked by the end of this fight, regardless of who wins it. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. So what, do you have a decision? Decision, yeah. Hang on. Joanna losing. Are you writing that down? No, I said I write. I had to make a note of something. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got it. Um, we got the same. Yeah, tough to pick. Probably tough um, fight to pick on the card. Um, uh, I think the Oliveria Max Griffin fight's the hardest fight to pick. It's a fifty-fifty, really. Yeah. Um, well, that moves to our, our main event. Uh, Israel Asani versus Joel Romero. Um, pretty tough fight to pick. The thing about Romero is that you never know when's the dude going to slow down. He's 43 years old, and I mean, he looks like he's you know in his 20s. Um, yeah, <laughs> probably the freakest freak athlete we've ever seen in MMA, as far as just like super genetically gifted and carrying athleticism well into his older age. You know, competing in the Olympics. Uh, I just found out today his brother was so Romero was in the Olympics for wrestling. His brother was in the Olympics for boxing. So Dang. I mean, you know, they're both. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, just gen- fights just, like you a know, maniac too. Yeah, if you don't believe in gen- like genetics having a role in you know sports or whatever or anything, I mean, just look at that dude. Um, yeah, but psychopath. One, th- a lot of people are saying. Yuelo is just going to fucking take him down, dude. Israel Zanya's uh, grappling sucks. Uh, dude, Romero never takes anybody down. And when he does, he lets them back. They get back up instantly. He's an <laughs> Olympic silver medalist, and he never uses it. He, um, so I don't see why people are leaning so heavy into thinking Romero is just going to go in there and just uh, Randy Couture smash him. He's just never yeah. done it. A lot of people think Romero's going to win. Which is shocking to me. Very shocking. I don't even think he deserves this fight. I, in my opinion, Cannoneer should be fighting Adesanya. Yeah, I think so too. I think Cannoneer should be fighting him. Yeah, and I think that would be way more. In- I think that would be way more interesting too. Yeah. I mean, I get they want to build Cannoneer up more, but at the same time, he's a much more deserving contender than Romero is. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, Costa would be the ideal guy, but he tore his bicep or whatever. Yeah, I mean, shit, they could have just had Romero fight Cannonier now, and then whoever won that fight. Uh, they really Sanya. just, they really just could have waited, period, for Costa because he's like apparently good to go now or like close to it. So they really just yeah. could have waited. Wow. Well, but um, but, uh, well, now we're stuck with this. Yeah, it'll be I mean, interesting in the time being. But this is slightly better than Aldo getting a title fight, but still not great, still terrible. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Romero is really a wild card. You just never really know what he can do. Um, he likes to be very defensive and then just randomly explode. I don't know. He likes to sit there, yeah. his high guard, parry shots, cover block, and then out of nowhere just unleash bombs. Um, I just don't think it's going to work for on Adesanya, though. The only thing you... I mean, Kelvin was able to do it, but... Again, Kelvin had a very good strategy for being able to do that and being able to close the distance. Um, Romero does go for takedowns occasionally, but uh, honestly, his level change takedowns, like singles and doubles, aren't that great. 
his uh, trips are very good. His upper body throws are amazing. He's got a great inside trip and a great yeah. outside trip. Um, really, the only time I've ever seen him use his grappling to great effect were in Jock, the Jock Ray fight was pretty impressive, and the Machida fight. Uh, he was losing that fight, and like the last like couple minutes of the third round, he just fucking slings him to the ground and grounds and pounds with elbows, so he's almost dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but really, that was because Machida was older, and Machida just did not see that coming at all. He was just not ready for that at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Adesanya will be ready for that, um, and I think the range might play a big factor, and I feel like even though Yoel has only been stopped once in his career, and it was like in his first pro fight ever, I think Austin might be able to stop him. Hmm. Is he going to stop him or is he going to fuck him up real bad for five rounds? What, what round do you think he's going to stop him in? Second or third. Damn. Um, and I've got... Actually, I'll say second. Um, I've got Asanya winning like 70-30, what I'd say. Yeah. Well, I have Adesanya winning a unanimous decision, 45 or 50-45. I think he'll take every round. Um, I think he's just going to pick Romero apart for five rounds straight, and we're just going to watch. I think it's going to be almost like Anderson Silva, like by like the fourth round, and uh, you're like Adesanya is going to be like kind of bored, and he's going to be kind of like in his groove, and he's just be kind of dancing around and just like lighten Romero up, and Romero's going to look like a bloody mess. And, and um, it'll be kind of pathetic by like the fourth or fifth round. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, it's hard to see Romero just getting decimated like that. But I mean, you just never know, man. Romero's a freak. You just never know what's going to happen with that guy. But I've never, I've just never been that impressed with him. I mean, I haven't seen a, t- a ton of his fights. But it, or at least his last, or at least his his last fight, he def he definitely did not look great. In my opinion. Yeah, people were acting like that was like one of his best performances against Costa, which I think, even though the fight was competitive, I thought he looked like shit. Uh, yeah, I that he did not look like, great against Costa. He was slipping a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, but, that being said, I just realized I have nothing planned for fuck it, it's the prelims. Oh my god. So, this week, you can just extra fuck it. But I will want to, I can just brush over these really, really fast. Well, Sean O'Malley's uh, going to win. We already know that. There actually are some interesting prelims on the card. Sean O'Malley's coming man. Back. Sean O'Malley's coming back after his uh, fucked up foot and then the uh, multiple suspensions by Asada for Osterine, which was quote-unquote tan supplement, whatever. Um, he's fighting Quinones. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I can't. I mean, I'm always probably gonna win. They're probably just setting him up to you know build him up because everyone likes him a lot. Um, Mark yeah. Madsen is fighting some bum, I guess. Hubbard, <laughs> <laughs> fighting Hubbard. Uh, Mark Madsen's got potential. Uh, oh, striking Hubbard. still in question. Looks pretty decent in the last fight, but a uh, great Greco wrestler out of Team Quest. And then Duran Wynn is coming back. The uh, five foot two middleweight Duran Wynn <laughs> coming back to uh, fight Mir Shark. Uh, Duran Wynn looked terrible in his last fight, um, but he trains at AKA, and I really think the reason he looked terrible is because he cut so much weight because he's uh, he's a big little chungus. <laughs> Even though he's kind of weird because he's like jacked, but he's like. He carries so much muscle that it like really dis- it's a disadvantage because he's so goddamn small. Yeah, I don't care. I, it'll be interesting. I, I like watching him fight. I like watching anybody from AK <laughs> fight, to be honest. Except for Luis Pena, because I can't stand that guy. Uh, but um Yeah, so that's our fuck it, it's the prelims. <laughs> Next fight night's um, the card is stacked, by the way. I mean, also, I'm just saying that. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. This is the part I, I, I'm really looking forward to because I wrote these questions today. I was super excited. <laughs> oh, great. Um, All right. Let's move on to our next segment, the lightning round. Oh, baby. <laughs> so, hey, if you got any questions for us and you're listening, yeah, send, hey, if you send yeah, uh, questions for the lightning round, for the lightning round, you know, send uh, send them to the House of Russ official. I guess you'll just get them and be the ones you ask me. Yeah. Oh. The House of Russ official Instagram. And, uh, 
Yeah, or comment on YouTube, which is what we're on right now. <laughs> um, well, then we're uh, going to see if we're not going to have questions. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I mean, for God's, you can you can say anything. For God's sakes, our last show I talked about gladiator arenas with Chuck Liddell and uh, fucking Cody Garbrandt, <laughs> <laughs> Tim um, Sylvia. <laughs> All right. Well, that's actually a great lead-in to our first question, the timer. Let's get it going, oh, right? God. You ready? All right, I have to start the timer? No, no. We, we, we have, I'm going to add it in. I'm just saying, are you ready? Oh. All right, I'll get yeah. the timer. <laughs> <I'm ready>. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Ready? Now. All right. You're locked in a coliseum with a 1,500-pound Kodiak, 1500 Kodiak bear. What three okay. fighters do you want to help you fend it off? Uh, do, and we have no weapons? No weapons. You just got to fight the fucking thing. <laughs> Fuck. All right. I want Randy Couture for sure. Um, I want um, I want Nganu. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, Randy Couture, Nganu, and, and Tony Ferguson. Yeah, you can get Tony Ferguson to ankle pick it, Randy to ground and pound it, yeah. and if it gets back up, Ngana can punch it. Oh, and then uh, – or it would be a toss-up between Tony Ferguson or Dan Severn. <laughs> or oh, Ken, God. Dan Severn, Ken Shamrock, and – Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and, and, Jonathan, Jonathan and Jonathan Goulet. And Jonathan Goulet. <laughs> so he can get knocked out as he runs towards it. <laughs> Poor bastard. All right, um – if you could change any rule in MMA, what would it be? Uh, um, shit, dude. Um, uh, the scoring system. Does that Do count? A way you'd score differently? Yeah. Uh, we'd have AI. We'd have microchips in the gloves or something. And uh, it'd be like two points for striking, two points for kicks. Okay. Significant. And uh, like five points for a takedown, three points. Two, three points for getting up, a point for a submission attempt, a point for a submission escape, some maybe do some shit like that, or a half a point for a submission escape, maybe. Shit like All that. All right. If you could be on the Joe Rogan podcast with one other celebrity athlete or person, who would it be with? Oh, uh, uh, fucking Jack White. Okay. <laughs> Easy. I'm Jack White. All right. Yeah. And, uh, who would win? Santos or Reyes? Tiago San um yeah, Tiago Santos or Dominic Reyes. Uh we got a bunch of these. You better All right. Um off the my gut feeling says Santos. Okay. Prime Anderson Silva versus Prime Junior Dos Santos at at open weight. <laughs> oh god. At open weight? Yeah, and Anderson walks around at like two hundred two or five, I think. So Junior Santos is about two thirty. Oh my god. Uh fuck dude. I'll go uh, I'll go Silva. Okay. That's tough. He had Khabib, a chin back in the day. Khabib versus three Amanda Nunez. <laughs> three clones of her. <laughs> oh fuck dude. Um probably Probably could be, but I'm going could be. Could be just an, it's on a different level of everybody, dude. All right, Mighty Mouse versus fighting every single person who was in UFC one in a row. <laughs> who wins? Everybody. So, so not even just like the winners. He has to fight not, literally not every single once, one of them. Not all once. But he fights one, fights the next, fights the yeah. next, fights the next. Oh, and he gets no break at no. all. Yeah. Does he win or does he lose? Fuck. He'd probably still win because I imagine some of those people he would get out of there in the first like thirty seconds with a couple yeah, leg kicks. Probably. <laughs> Jack Black versus Kevin James. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin James just started a YouTube channel last week, by the way. Just, yeah, put sketches. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I say uh, Kevin James because he was right. in here comes the boom. All right, Hori Masvidal versus King Kong Bundy. <laughs> King Kong Bundy, dude. <laughs> Nicholas Cage versus Kevin Hart. 
I don't even want to do it to. I like Nicolas Cage better, but Kevin Hart would probably fuck him up. Nicolas Cage is a lot taller than him, so who knows? Yeah, but Kevin Kevin Hart's jacked, dude. All right, um, got two more. If all steroids were le- and drugs were legal in the UFC, which MMA fighter would come out the goat? Oh, uh, fuck. <sighs> probably Vitor Belfort. <laughs> it's prob- that's a good answer. All right. <laughs> if all MMA fighters were tested across the major mainstream sports like football, soccer, basketball, tennis, baseball, which one do you think would come out being the most well-rounded? Wait, you're saying if you tested the athleticism of every single sport? Yeah, if you put, like, everyone in the UFC in all of these major sports, we're out of time, but we got finished and we got started it. Um, yeah. Put them all through the major mainstream sports like football, soccer, basketball, tennis. Oh, and- they all played every sport. Yes. Oh, Which yeah, ones do you think would come out being the most well-rounded across all of them? Oh, shit. Probably, um... It'd either be an it'd either be an MMA fighter or it'd be probably like a wide receiver. No, no, no. I'm saying like which UFC fighter would come up being the best at all of those. Oh, uh, oh, I, I thought you meant what sport? Like at all the no. different. Oh no. shit. Current or current or retired any, too? All time, any, anything. God damn it, dude! That's so hard. Um. Fuck. I mean, GSP is definitely up there. Yeah. I feel like I have def- I have different answers if I thought about it longer. But right now, all I can think of is GSP. And um, Romero would be a good choice, I think, too. Romero would be pretty good. Covington, I bet you would do great. Colby Covington. Yeah, probably. Be- probably get- That's actually true. I think he would be fantastic. So probably Colby Covington, GSP. Um, I feel one of the smaller guys. One of the smaller bastards would probably do really good. BJ Penn. I'll put him in there, too. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, uh, are you a casual or how casual are you? Whatever. How BJ casual Penn. am I? All right. So far, I don't think anyone's gotten any of these right. You may have gotten the last one right, but I don't think you did. I think I got it partially right, but I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dominic Cruz began his pro MMA career in 2005, oh, leading God. up to his 22-2 and two record. Who was his first career loss? He was 22 and 2. I have two answers in my head. Don't overthink them. I have three answers in my head, actually. I feel like it can only be one of three. It can only be Uriah Faber or Cody Garbrandt or TJ Dillashaw. I feel like it's one of those three. And him and Uriah Faber had a huge beef. Pretty sure Cody Garbrandt beat him, though. But I'm going to say Uriah Faber. Ding, ding, ding. You got it right. Yes. I remember. Yeah, I remember that huge rivalry. Yes. For the record, TJ, he beat TJ Dillashaw. Um, that was after he came back from his ACL tear and fought him and won his belt back when TJ was in his prime, which was nuts. Um, he, Garbrandt did beat him because he fought brilliantly, and it's the one and only time he's ever fought brilliantly. Um, but bonus, where did that fight take place? What organization? And the, the Mandalay Bay Events <laughs> C- C- Center what, Arena. What organization? <laughs> WC? Yes. Boom. Look at me. Right. I'm not a fucking casual. Your eye Faber finished him with a gu- uh, guillotine choke in the first round. Yes, you may have the belt, but I'm the least casual. <laughs> yep, and uh, they fought two more times, and the second fight was pretty close, and the third fight was a blowout. And the crews beat him both times. Um, yeah. But yeah. That's so, fucking awesome. Yep. So uh, I'm proud of I guess that wraps this up. Um, when we see you all again, we'll know who is the new champ based yep. off of um, – uh, hold on, let me open my book again. Who is the new middleweight? Who is the new strawweight? And who is the Thor champ? Yep, and it'll be based off of uh, Dariush versus Drakkar Close. Benil, yep. Benil Dariush versus Drakkar Close. That's what counts. And uh, that is. I'm going to fucking stop this fucking thing. A wrap.
Yeah, I'm quitting. Brace yourself, Shogunua.